Well, here we are again. It's Monday morning and the beginning of another week. And um, I'm praying for you that God would give you grace and strength as you uh, face whatever challenges and uh, difficulties you might have to wrestle with. Because one of the things we know is that we live in a, a broken and a dying world with lots of things wrong with it. And believe it or not, we are really kind of the spiritual paramedics or emergency workers who are set in with the, the healing gift of the gospel to bring peace and sanity to an otherwise pretty crazy world. Um, last week I ended by saying that I wanted to spend this week talking about the, uh, the story of the prodigal son. And, and I do want to do that, but I'm not, not going to start that until tomorrow because something else came to my mind that I wanted to talk about today and I think would be a good place at the beginning of the week to insert this. And uh, what I really want to talk about is really kind of an obscure passage found in the Song of Solomon, which basically makes this kind of cryptic statement, if you will. It said that uh, the little foxes destroy the vineyard. And what Solomon is talking about, how the small foxes, and there are many of them in Israel, that will run through the fields and they'll come into a vineyard and they'll nib nibble away on the end of a ripening vine and uh, essentially destroy the whole cluster. And left unattended, left you know unexterminated, they can really bring a great bill of damage and, and destruction to a, to a vineyard. And so he says it just takes a little thing like that to create real problems. And the reason why I point that out is because a lot of times people tell us, you know, that we don't need to sweat the details, you know, that that uh, details aren't important. And uh, that but yet the fact of the matter is that some of the most important details are often hidden in the fine print of a contract or some other agreement. Uh, sometimes important things are just kind of muttered under somebody's breath. Uh, there's all sorts of things that are, are little and may seem at the moment inconsequential, but only later prove to be critical to uh, whatever it is we're trying to accomplish and can sabotage great success. One of the things we need to understand is that God is a God of details in the sense that we look at the physical universe that he created and it's the minutia of detail exhausts the ability to, of us to even understand it. I mean, whether we're talking about uh, microscopic life or the macroscopic universe, there's, there's so much minutia and detail. I mean, we even talk about the sun that if it was just a little bit closer, it would fry us. If it was a little farther away, we'd freeze. There's a certain setting up and organizing of the universe in a way so that it has a, a perfect symmetry that doesn't come by, by casual happenstance. It's one of the strongest reasons we have against believing evolution is the fact that evolution claims that everything is really random and it's chaotic and, and everything's accidental. And yet, you know, I've never seen anything that was of value that came as a result of some accident. You know, my car was not accidentally constructed in some shop someplace. It was designed, it, the parts were created, it was assembled, it was transported, and it was sold to me for good money. But those things had all had a, a, a system behind them. There was a, a detail within them. And the reason I say this is because I feel like many times in our Christian life, we're kind of haphazard. We may give copious detail to our personal finances or to our personal wardrobe or to how the house we live in or what it looks like. We can worry about all sorts of things. We're talking about getting our cars detailed. And yet we can leave our spiritual life undetailed. We can leave it kind of haphazard. And in other words, that being a Christian means I go to church on Sunday and I listen to what's said and I decide someplace between the front door and the parking lot whether or not I want to take that seriously or not or just kind of put it somewhere where I'll say, well, I'll get to that later on in my life. Um, the problem is that when you really need whatever that was later on in your life, you probably can't find it and don't know how to use it. Uh, my wife gets all the credit in the world for making me a fairly organized person. I'm not organized by nature. I wasn't organized by training. I was basically that child left to himself that brings his mother shame. And I fulfilled all parts of that passage. Um, but the thing that was really interesting when I got married, my wife began to really coach me on how to be better organized. And one of the concepts she taught me that I had never learned, she said, well, you use something, you know, clean it off and put it back where you got it. So next time when you need it, you know exactly where it was. Because I was that guy, like most of us, who have piles of stuff and we say, I know it's in here somewhere. And we tell our wives or our husbands, don't touch anything because I know where everything is. And the truth of the matter is, you don't really know where everything is. You just know the very basic uh, area in which you last remember having it. 
And I found a lot of time wasted looking for a tool or something else that I needed because I didn't put it back. And it was so interesting because over the years, we've developed kind of a natural discipline. You know, when my uh, son and his family went back to California after being with us for 16 days, you can imagine with those little kids, um, our house was, you know, like basically it looked like a war zone. And so the first thing we do as soon as we wave, wave goodbye was go into the house and start cleaning up. And it's interesting. We, we operate kind of like two sides of a locomotive. We just know what we do and we just get it done. And in three years, three hours, we had our house back in order and got the lawn cut and a number fertilized the yard and did a number of things and by two o'clock in the afternoon I say man that didn't take long at all well the whole point is is that there's an organization that has naturally come into our lives into our relationship and every part of our life because I, I really do believe that if you have a cluttered desk it probably is a reflection of the clutter that's going on up here and that's why for me before I can start anything I start by organizing my workspace so that I can focus on what's most important and make sure I know where everything is so I don't waste a lot of time trying to find something. Well, that can happen to us spiritually as well. I think that so many of us tend to fall into that trap of being kind of nonchalant and haphazard. And, you know, when God told Israel to build a tabernacle and then later on they, he gave them the pattern of the temple, he, he said in Exodus that they, they should make the pattern exactly like God had showed it, not kind of close or approximately. He said, I want it to look exactly like this. And I think there's a message in that. God is concerned with exactness, not perfection, but it's an attention to details because the details matter. And oftentimes it's the little things that neglected that end up causing the greatest hardships in our life. So I guess I want to really challenge you as you're going into this week that before you, you know, even leave the house, sit down and make a short list of what are the things that you want to accomplish today? What do you see as being the most important things that you need to take care of? And I would simply start with the thing you most don't want to do and do that first, praying that God will give you a good heart and good energy. And what you'll find is you'll come to the end of your day and saying, man, I, I didn't think I'd be able to accomplish all this, but by God's grace, I was. And what you'll find is little by little, as you do that day by day, organization and structure will come into your life. If you come home at the end of the day and your house is a mess and everything's chaotic, you say, I'm just too tired. I just want to get in my <laughs> my uh, sleepers and, and flip on the TV and, and, and drink Diet Coke. I mean, really, uh, what you really need to do is... Put your life in order on every level, your finances, your, your, your physical environment, uh, even your relationships, that you have a time and a place for the important people in your life, that you schedule out those kinds of things so that you make sure that they're being attended to, and you'll find that your life will be much more fun. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about that. Bless you. Go in His grace.